hey, system coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to another rebuild on the channel. Steven Gerrard has signed with Aston Villa. The Liverpool legend himself, the man that made me love Liverpool and fall in love with them to go ahead and support them for these years, has gone ahead and finally signed with Aston Villa, a team with a long history of success. Of course, lately it hasn't been as great, but they have just brought out Jack Grealish and sold him for an immense amount of money to Manchester City. And right now, it looks like they are falling apart right after that deal happened. They are currently in the 16th position in the league with 10 points and Stevie G has been signed. He is now the new manager. He is leaving Rangers to join them after a success over there. And I, I wish him everything, but just the best. Everything should be working out for him, hopefully, at Aston Villa. No, hold on. The way I just said it is wrong, I think. Everything but the best? Is that, is that the right way of saying it? I think that's the wrong way of saying it. Anyways, it is hopefully going to be an amazing time for him at Aston Villa. And then after that, when Klopp is done with Liverpool, we can get Stevie G across to Merseyside. I would love for that to happen. So I'm really excited to watch Aston Villa games from now on because I love Stevie G. And if you do as well, and if you care about this rebuild, go ahead and smash that like button because your boy... Is going to go ahead and turn this rebuild into something where it's inspired by Stevie G. The teams that he played in, the players that he played alongside of, some of the players that he has had some influence in in the youth academy at Liverpool as well, and some of the players he has seen come up in, at Liverpool at his time when he was still the captain of the club. And of course, the England national team, the Liverpool Champions League title winning team, all of that will be inspiring this rebuild to make it Steven Gerrard themed. I am extremely excited to step into this one. Aston Villa, I'm here to save you from your 16th position in the Premier League and get you back to the top, not only in the Premier League, but also European football. I would love to see Stevie G lift that beautiful title. Obviously, one thing that we will try and avoid is a slip. All right, I get it. Everyone is probably commenting about this already. As soon as I fail something, in this Aston Villa rebuild. There's going to be so many people commenting. Oh, look at Johnny. He slipped. He couldn't win the title. I get it, bro. I get it. All right. I felt it at the time. It happened to me. I was so sad. Then Baba ran through and scored the goal and ruined our title chances. It's fine. I think I got over it. Did I? I don't think I... I I don't think I did. 6.7 million in the preseason tournament. And the budget is looking like 35 million with a wage budget of 320k. The board is expecting us to sign a crucial first team player to the midfield or forward position. We have to replace three players from the team. So they want us to go ahead and do a proper rebuild. Start off quickly and youth development. We will maybe pay some attention to it, but... Since it is a medium objective, we'll be able to focus on brand exposure and not get fired. And of course, domestic success. Uh, we have to finish mid-table, reach around a 16 in the FA Cup and Continental. Obviously, there's nothing yet for us. I'm excited for this rebuild. Let's take a look into this team and see which players we might keep around and which players definitely need replacement instantly. Immediately, I have changed the formation of this team because Stevie G at Rangers likes to play a 4-3-3 type formation. So we're going to go with this formation as well. I have looked into his past 10 matches and it looks like the 4-3-3, according to SofaScore, is the way he has lined up his Rangers squad. And I think that's a, a formation that's basically inspired by Liverpool. I would assume Klopp has been playing this 4-3-3 for quite some time, but it doesn't look like he has a dedicated CDM from what I can see from the heat maps of certain players that he has in his squads. Yes, the central one does tend to be a little bit more defensive than the other ones on the sides, but I'm going to go with the 4-3-3 flat rather than with the holding uh, version. But even though if we wanted to, of course, uh, we can bring this man down. We can bring Douglas Luiz down a little bit, drop him into the CDM position and play it like that as well. That is, of course, a possibility for us. Now, in goal, we have Emiliano Martinez, who is amazing. He's an incredible goalkeeper. He is six foot five tall, which makes him so hard to get past on long shots. Tyrone Mings at center back, the English national team player now. Konza right next to him. And actually very talented center back 
but we could keep a hold off for quite some time. Matty Cash in that right back position, 23 years old, target on left back with the 77 rating, 25 years old, Sanson, one of the newer signings of the squad, 26 years old, Douglas Luiz, obviously former Manchester City player in that Aston Villa squad, McGinn, the hero of Aston Villa fans, uh, he's going to be in that left centre midfield position. I think that's the right way to set it up. Danny Ings uh, is going to be at striker. Buendia, the new signing on the right-hand side. And Leon Bailey on the left as the most potential in the squad. Belongs to him. He is going to be the biggest player we have at our expense to begin with. Then on the bench, we have, of course, Ollie Watkins, who probably has higher potential than Danny Ings. But right now... Danny is the man in the squad. And of course, Stevie G, I believe, had played with Danny. Did he play with Danny? Or was he already gone? I think he might have been gone at that point. But anyways, obviously, he saw him at Liverpool uh, play a couple of times. But yeah, Danny Ings, a former Liverpool player at striker. That just fits in better. Oli Watkins, Traore, El Ghazi making up a nice trio of players to sub in for the front three. Nakamba could be a very good substitution for Douglas Luiz. And then Ramsey, a very talented player coming in here, could be playing for McGinn and Sanson if necessary. Now, our team still has uh, players like Haus and Tuanzeva and Trezeguet who are good. And on the reserves, we have some youngsters. And uh, here's the thing. They want us to sign a player for the midfield or for the attack that should be a starting lineup player. Now, if I look at the squad, immediately my eye goes over to Sanson. Don't get me wrong, he's very well-rounded and a good player, but he could be a great substitute and we could be spending big in that centre midfield spot, inspired by former teammates of Stevie G. Let's go ahead and make a wise decision and bring in a crucial first team player to upgrade that spot right there. Steven Gerrard had an amazing player next to him during his time at Liverpool, Xabi Alonso, an incredible, incredible player. And he is of course a Spanish man. So we're gonna go after Fabian, not Fabian Delft. That's not what I wanted. I'm gonna go for Fabian from Napoli. He is going to be a, a lot of money that we will have to spend. Of course, he's going to be expensive. But at the same time, this could be the player to carry our team in that midfield into the future and beyond. Someone that still has room to grow. A left-footed player right here in him who has exceptional stats. So let's see if we can sign this Spanish lad to make him our Xabi Alonso. Now, of course, in this deal, I will have to offer someone in return. I think it's going to be impossible to avoid that. Nakamba will be happy with being a backup. Sanson might not be. So we're going to go ahead and offer Sanson in the deal. And we're going to offer them around 30 million for this man. And maybe a little bit of sell-on clause. They definitely do want more than that. I'm pretty sure of that. They want 43 million, which is basically our entire budget. I can give you 35.5. Come on. I need my wage budget. 41.6. This is going to be one tough negotiation. You can tell already. 38.5. Please give me Fabian Napoli. I need him to be the shabby. Yes. First signing of the rebuild. Secured. Fabian is happy to, si happy to sign, not to sign. <laughs> He's going to be signing. He has a face scan in the game as well. His agent is pretty happy with that deal working out. And here he comes, the first signing of the Aston Villa rebuild. He's going to be joining from Napoli and improving our team massively. An 82 rated player worth 32 million as he does come into the squad. And I genuinely do believe this could be a leader in our squad. Our very own Xabi Alonso regen, so to say. And uh, McGinn has a three-star weak foot. Fabian has a three-star weak foot. So we'll keep him the way they're set up right now. We got to change McGinn to a center midfielder because obviously at CDM, he is a bit lower rated. So he could go up to a 79 once we change him to a center mid, uh, which will definitely help with the starting lineup. Uh, and then we will try and push Fabian to have a better weak foot to be able to play on that right-hand side. But the man is coming in with great stats in terms of passing, dribbling, defensively, physically, shooting as well. He can do basically everything apart from running fast. We get a transfer offer for Trezeguet, who is only on the reserves. I need that money since we just spent everything we ever had on Fabian. It's a huge, crucial first team player signing, hopefully leading us to more success this season and maybe more money upcoming in the future. We have two more transfer offers coming in. One of them for El Ghazi, who I am actually keen on keeping around. But the other one for Davis will be accepted. He's only a backup to our backup, so... At that point, he becomes kind of redundant. So let's put him out there, get the money, 
and bring the cash in. As a backup to our beloved striker, Danny Ings, I am willing to let go of Ollie Watkins. Yes, I am saying it because, look, this is technically a downgrade, but Stevie G used to play with an incredible Uruguayan striker. And you guys know who he is. Of course, I'm talking about Luis Suarez. Darwin Nunez is supposed to be the next big thing from Uruguay. 22 years old, currently playing at Benfica, lower rated than Ali Watkins, but higher potential. So for that reason, I'm going in for this Uruguayan striker in a straight swap for Ali Watkins. If you're interested, let me know. Well, okay. So they want more, way more for him. I offered a little bit too low. We'll go again in a bit. Oli Watkins plus 8 million for Nunez. They want 13 million on top of it, man. I mean, they're both worth around the same, but of course this man has more potential and I do want him for the sake of Stevie G. Let's go, baby. That's the second signing of Steven Gerrard now at Aston Villa. It's looking like he gets to spend a lot of money. If you guys don't know yet, of course, Aston Villa has one of the richest owners in football. I think it's someone from Egypt. So, um, yeah, apparently Stevie G talked to him before he signed with Aston Villa. And uh, he kind of enjoyed the project that they're going to chase down and he wants to be part of it. So we have the money. We spend it. Nunes comes in to replace, of course, Oli Watkins. Now 77 rated already. So he has gone up by one rating. He starts off at a 76 normally. By the way, if you're wondering what this number below me means, it's just my uh, Twitch subscriber count. So don't freak out when you see it throughout the video. By the way, why is it not showing up properly? There should be like a box below it. Oh, wow. There it is. There's my box. Anyways, Nunez, 84 pace, 76 shooting, 74 dribbling, 83 physicality. The guy's a beast and he has high potential. So Danny Ings for this season, next season, Nunez, that could be the plan and set up. He has signed as a rotational player, so he's going to be happy with sitting on the bench. Stevie G also used to play with an amazing left back in the English national team. Of course, Ashley Cole was an incredible player. And we're going to try and replicate that English left back feeling here with the likes of James Justin. This man has sadly picked up a long term injury in real life and he's not necessarily playing as far as I know right now. But I do faith. I do have faith in him. Yes, there are higher potential players, but I want to turn this man into a beast. The six foot tall left back, someone that's physically strong and has the pace to handle those incredible attackers in the Premier League and uh, someone with Premier League experience. So I want this man in our team. Let's make it happen. Target plus 5 million is my offer here for James Justin. They want 10 million on top of it. That's a lot of money, I'll have to admit. But I can give them 7 mil and a sell-on clause of 5%. I think that's a fair deal. Target is not old. 9.1 mil, they have brought the price down to. 8. 8 mil. Come on, I'm overpaying massively here, but James Justin is going to be our Ashley Cole. Stevie G has played with him in the national team plenty of times, and he knows how to turn this man into a beast. 55K on his wages, four-year contract, James Justin. Welcome to the club, lad. Let's check out your stats. That's going to be more important to us here. So let's jump, jump right in. The rebuild of Aston Villa is working out. He's worth around 13 million at this stage. And I know how to get fullbacks very, very high rated very, very quickly. So James Justin takes over here. Of course, by the way, in terms of Ashley Cole, we do have Ashley Young on the bench as well. Could be a good uh, backup player for our team. He is going to be that since he's quite old. We don't necessarily have plans on having him in a starting lineup. But Justin comes in with a four-star weak foot with great pace, good dribbling, great defending, and okay physicality as well. We'll work on all of that. A high, high uh, fullback, which, is, which basically means he's going to be run around all the time. So he does need more stamina. But we will get him very high rated, hopefully, and push him way past his potential, which is, I think, an 81. Yes, 81 is pretty low. I know, but we can get him way past that. Oh, my. I completely forgot to look into the Youth Academy because we have Charles Coles in there, and he looks spicy. 83 to 94 potential. Well, this guy is special. We're signing him up immediately. And then we have a bunch of okay players in there that I'm not necessarily too interested in. I mean, yeah, I don't see any future for these guys. We are now in January and Aston Villa is in that ninth position. I'm excited, very excited to showcase you guys how far this team has made it. 
at this point. Half a season of Stevie G at the club and we're already outside of that bottom part that Aston Villa is struggling in in real life. 26 points and we are obviously way, way behind anywhere near the, the title. That is not an option for us. Top seven would be a dream come true. I don't know if we can pull that off, but let's talk about individual performances. We are seeing incredible growth within the team. Leon Bailey up to an 85. He has 86 potential, if you guys don't know. So he is looking incredible. Danny Ings performing well. Buendia going up from a 79 to an 82. Changed to a right wing as well. Uh, Fabian up to an 83 at this point. McGinn has gone up by, I think, plus three, if I'm not mistaken. Douglas Luis has gone up a little bit. Mings and Konza are approaching the 80 rating. Mings and has done it. Konza should be getting there. Matty Cash, 81 rated. And Justin ever since he signed, has gone up by plus two, and Martinez has gone up a little bit as well. While Nunez on the bench is doing well, has a plus five one form, so expecting him to actually be pulling off great performances off the bench. Chare and El Ghazi have some pluses on their form as well, so the boys are doing well. Stevie G is playing this 4-3-3, and he's doing well with it. So far, Leon Bailey with seven goals and two assists. And interestingly enough, Nunez, is wait is he playing more games than danny ings hold on a second danny ings has only he's played 14 games and only has one goal nunez outperforming him five goals and two assists okay the next luis suarez is uh doing a great job for stevie g it was the right choice to bring him in it seems like danny ings not necessarily performing he might have been injured for a little while so that he took over and it seems like he should be our striker next season. If he can get to the 80 rating this year, I'm happy to keep Nunez in the starting lineup, let go of Danny Ings and bring in another young striker for our team. El Ghazi, four goals, one assist from the bench. McGinn, three and one. Overall, very impressed with the team's performance and Bailey looking amazing with that plus three so far in this first half of the season. If we could somehow get top seven, that would put us into the conference league, I think, if I'm not mistaken. That would be some extra money, which I wouldn't mind. Hopefully, we can get like a budget of 50 mil next season to work with that nicely. The season has come to an end, guys, and take a look at that. Unbeaten in the month of May. What does that mean for us? It means we end up in the seventh position. Aston Villa have done it. A two-point gap to Leicester City. Top seven in the league. I think that puts us into the Conference League. I'm not too sure. I wish EA actually showed us where it puts us in the league table with those things on the left-hand side, but they don't, so it's fine. we got to find out ourselves next season. Hopefully, a budget above 50 million will be possible. Now, Aston Villa, exceptional performances here. Really nice to see them in the top 10. That is where they belong to, in my opinion. This team should be up there with the financial backing they have, with the players they have, and with the coach they have now in Stevie G. 75 points was enough for Man City to win the league title. It seems like it was a quite competitive season. And let's take a look at the players. Bailey, 86, already at full potential. Justin, past his max potential already. Matty Cash, 83 rated. Konza, gone past Mings's rating at this point. Emi Martinez, 86. Danny Ings, 82 still. Buendia with a plus five this year. Papian plus two, Douglas Luis plus three, McGinn plus three, and then Nunez on the bench has done pretty well as well. I wonder if he still has more goals than Danny Ings this season. Let's take a look at it. So, Leon Bailey with 13 and four, a 6.9 rating on average, plus four this season alone. Danny Ings has actually overtaken Nunez. Seems like it was, in fact, an injury that kind of held him back in the first half of the season. Congratulations to Danny, but he's definitely going to go next season. We're going to take profits from this man and put this guy into our striking position and focus on him and bring in a younger backup for him. But Bian has been dominating the midfield with great performances for us, 6.4 rating on average. And then Mikkin has played a lot of matches with 10 clean sheets uh, as he was playing in our team. That is very, very nice to see. So overall, a great season for our squad, capped off with a top seven finish, which could hopefully lead to a nice budget boost for the upcoming year so we can spend big time on other positions where I don't feel very comfortable right now. Maybe Tyrone Mings might have to go. He looks like the weak link in that defense. And Douglas Luiz 
it's not looking good, too good for you right now either, my friend. The new season begins with 8.6 million, up to 8.6 million in the preseason tournament. And the budget is... Okay, around 50 million, guys. Exactly what we kind of expected here. I've gotten really good in this predicting new transfer budget thing. I don't know what it is. Some kind of skill I have developed over the years of doing rebuilds and sprint to glories and stuff, of course. Especially sprint to glories. But here we are now with a fully talented team ready to go into the future. I'm going to be checking certain players' development plans, seeing which ones are going to take a long time, and uh, getting rid of those that don't have any upside to them left. Now, here's the deal, guys. A lot of players have returned from loan. Yes, lots and lots of players have returned from loan, and we're going to let go of a lot of players that are never going to be playing for the club and just getting rid of them as soon as we can. Ashley Young is going to be leaving, leaving the team anyways, but anyone that isn't going to help me in any form down the line is being put onto the transfer list. We're going to clear out the club as much as we can in this transfer window. It's going to take me some time, I know, but we are going to do it and we're going to do it the right way and bring all that money into the team for the future. So uh, I'm happy with going ahead and doing that immediately. Also, along with that, the players that have come back, Hurahain here, 3 million for him. I'm, be, I'm going to be very happy to sell him on. I'm very happy to see Wesley come back at a 12 million evaluation. We're going to put him onto the transfer list as well. Of course, a decent striker, but not necessarily what I'm looking for in terms of a backup to Nunez, who's going to be taken over in the team. Gilbert just came in as well. Going to be a great player to make some money off of. El Ghazi can remain in the team. His development plan is looking bad. Tyron Mings, his development plan is looking like he's never going to grow past 80. So we're going to have to replace the captain of the squad. Traore can remain a backup. McGinn still has some room to grow. Douglas Luiz is struggling a little bit, but we can get there. Danny Ings is going to be sold in about seven weeks time. He should be going up to an 83 so we can make some more money off of Danny Ings. And uh, that way we can let him go and bring uh, Nunez into the starting lineup. Konza continues growing. Same with Justin and Cash, even, even though it will take some time. We need a big season from Nunez this time around. Fabian, sadly, uh, for some reason, the main man himself here is stuck with 61 weeks on him, but he is one of the highest rated players in the team, so we will give him at least another season to prove himself in that centre midfield spot. If not, we might have to find a new Xabi Alonso. Buendia is fine. Emi Martinez is not going to be growing this year, but 86 is fine for me. He's one of the highest rated players in the team. And Leon Bailey is fine to stay as well, but the rest will be sold and we will use that budget wisely. Danny Ings transfer offer for 28 million. I, hmm, I'm going to negotiate this one up. 32 million. There we go. That's better. Transfer offer is not flying in. Wesley is going to move over to Newcastle. Uh, we're going to reject the other offer here from Gladbach. And Mings is going to be going for 18.1 million across to Benfica. Ooh, some big offers coming in now. Finally, Buendia, 50 million for a player that is 25 years old. And does he still have some upside to him? I will have to check that right now. I don't know if we can let Buendia go. He is one of our biggest players, of course. He's in the top four highest rated players in our squad. And it takes him how long to grow? Ooh, 39 weeks. I mean, I could see him maybe go up to at least an 86 with the other side development plan. You know what I'm talking about. But we could maybe get him to the 86. I am just wonder, like, is it worth letting him go right now, invest into another player? Maybe if they overpay. Maybe if they want to massively overpay for Buendia, I will go ahead and let him go. And we will sign someone else that's going to be bigger for our team down the line so 70 million if you're willing to pay that inter i am willing to let buendia go 70 million the rebuild continues the old faces of aston villa are slowly disappearing out of the team and i know buendia is a new signing but still we gotta make our moves uh, for the best of the team this transfer window is gonna be a mad one Gilbert is gonna be leaving over to sporting because i don't want to strengthen up any of the teams in the premier league Uhain is going to go over to Serie A. And Fabian, who is stuck developing, a 41 million offer for him. I have faith in him, man. I want him to be the Xabi Alonso. I want him to be. After Buendia has just been sold, we have another offer for Tyrone Miggs, this time from Barcelona. You know what? I like Barca. They're struggling financially. Let me help him out here and accept that one for him. And it's, of course, a huge dream for someone like Mings to play there. So I won't stand, stand in the way of it. Why did I just say stand? 
I won't stand in the way of it. That's, uh, yeah, that's my terrible, what, Texan accent? I don't even know. They keep wanting Fabian, and you can only get him if you pay double his value. Real Madrid, if you're willing to pay 80 million for Fabian, I'm willing to let him go. Oh, there you go. Then it's a no for me. After the sale of Tyron Mings, a new center back is needed. So we're going to get right on it. And a new right wing is needed as well. For the right wing position, I'm going to go for a Dutchman. And the reason behind that is, of course, Stevie G used to play with the likes of Dirk Kout on the wings for Liverpool. So I am going to go after Noah Lang. He is possibly going to be the replacement of Buendia. Of course, lower rated but a man with high, high potential for the future. A man that is sought after by multiple teams in the future for sure. And I want to bring him in as our Dirk Kout into the squad. So there he goes. We're going to try and sign him up for, I guess, around 40 million. That would maybe be an appropriate offer. They want 45. I got money. 138 million still left after this one. This is not the biggest signing we're going to make this time. Lang comes in at the value of 36.5 million at the 80 rating. Of course, it's not amazing. It's nothing compared to Leon Bailey, but he has a bright future ahead of him. And that is why we want him on that side. 86 pace, 77 shooting, 73 passing, 84 dribbling. We're not just building for the now. We're building for the future as well. But for that center back position, I need someone who's massive, who's going to lead that back line. So let's make it happen. In the last season of Stevie G, which was 2015, Joe Gomez came into the squad of Liverpool. And now he is playing for Bayern Munich, but it's time to bring him back to England. Stevie G wants this young man to lead the line at the back alongside Konza. So we're going to make it happen. 45 million for Joe Gomez. I am happy to go after this one. Let's make it a, a 55 million offer for him. He still has some upside to him, so they would want a lot of money. 59 million is fine with me. Joe Gomez, return to your leader. Welcome back. In some ways, you can look at this as the next Jamie Carragher coming into our team. I guess you could say a former teammate of Stevie. Uh, but of course, someone that is much faster. <laughs> so Joe comes in at the 84 rating, guys. And with that, our defense is upgraded nicely. And I do expect us to do very well in the future with this with this pairing. Konza, Joe Gomez, I like that a lot. 84 pace, 79 pace, 84 defending, 84 defending. We have Joe Gomez better physically, better in terms of passing, dribbling wise and defensively. They are very close to each other as well. So we have two great center backs alongside each other while Konza has a five-star weak foot. So we'll put him over there and Joe Gomez will play right center back for us alongside Matty Cash. For the CDM position to replace Douglas Luiz, I'm going to go for someone who will fit in here and be the next Mascherano. Yes, I am looking for Lisandro Martinez, the center back for Ajax, who can also possibly play in the CDM position and left back as well. He's 5 foot 10 tall. He should be around 82, 83 at this point. Probably 82 at this stage. He is a very, very good player that I would love to bring into the squad. So let's try and make that happen. I'm going to be offering them 20 million plus Douglas Luiz. I wonder if that is a deal they're interested in. They want 27 million added onto it. Let's make it 25 and this deal should go through. And it does. Lisandro Martinez. Let's get you into the team, lads. As expected, he comes in at an 82 rating with a value of 36 million. And he will take over exactly in that spot that I was talking about earlier on. It is going to be the new Mascherano for our team. Is he lower rated on the bench? No, he goes up actually. But he will be fine. In that CDM spot, Martinez comes in with great pace, good passing, okay dribbling, amazing defending physicality. I'm thinking he will do a great job there. As a backup midfielder, guys, I am going to go for a German player because, of course, Didi Hamann used to play alongside Stevie, a German midfielder. And I want to bring in Weigel as a backup into our team, if possible, for that midfield that we have built up right now. Obviously, I don't want to pay the amount that they want for him, which is 41 million. I think he goes for a lot less than that right now. He should be worth around maybe... 25 something like that so let's go ahead and make an offer of 23 million for Weigel they want around 30 plus now we're going to remove the exchange player and go in with an offer of 27 million 
try and make this deal happen. 30 million for a backup. That's a lot of money, but we do need a good squad depth in order to be able to win things. So I am willing to pay this price right now. 80 rating, 22 million in value. Perfect. Just perfect for our team. Replacing the goalkeeper right there. Weigel is coming in with qualities to be used in center midfield and CDM as well. Probably higher rated at CDM. Actually, he's a 82 rated CDM. Same as Martinez. Ooh, that brings in even more competition. I didn't think that was a thing. So Weigel is much higher rated at CDM, which makes sense. The guy has incredible defensive stats. So compared to Martinez, who is the better guy? Martinez has more pace. He has the same amount of passing. Weigel has better dribbling. Martinez better defending and physicality. Martinez is the man we're going to go with. We're going to keep Weigel as a center mate so he can be subbed on for Fabiana McGinn instead of just Ramsey uh, because that's the way the game does it in simulations. As a backup for our main striker, Nunez, I'm going to go for the next Fernando Morientes. And his name begins the same way. Fer. Fer Nino is the man that we're going to bring in into our team. We're going to approach him as well, the same as Montpellier is doing. 21-year-old striker as a player for our team. Morientes used to be in a squad in Liverpool in 2005 as well. So we're going to bring him in. I hope you guys enjoy the fact that we have gone with a concept for this rebuild that rather than just going ahead and rebuilding it the way we normally do. So I hope you guys enjoy it so far. I personally am very much because it adds a whole nother layer to this whole rebuild thing. 14 million. They have accepted. Fine with me. He comes in at the evaluation of 20.5. What the hell just happened? I got him for 14. Well, that is very surprising. I don't know how the hell that just happened, but we now have a decent backup striker now to replace Nunez if necessary. Only 70 pace, but great shooting. Okay dribbling and okay physicality. He is six foot three tall. So he's going to be the guy to cross the ball and to try, to try and get the goals in. Heading accuracy 79, Fernino is set up for that right there. Let's see real quick one last thing before we go into uh, the push towards January. I wanted to see, do we have any sort of potential in our team right now? It doesn't seem like we have. We have an exciting prospect in Nino, so he's, his potential has actually gone up. He only has 83 potential. Get in. Cole's still here. Not a potential to be special player anymore, but we're going to try and loan him out ideally and have El Ghazi on the bench. Uh, and then that's pretty much it in terms of talents. January, here we come, and it is an unbeaten month of football for Aston Villa. Where do we stand in the league? What? Nah. Nah, this is not going to finish like this. There's no way this is going to finish like this. Are you kidding? How are we pulling this off? The transfers we have made seem to have an impact, guys. An incredible impact. Nunez, are you on fire or what's going on here? Noah Lang already up to an 85. Buendia replaced nicely. Nunez still 82. Beatty is up to an 88. Making an 82. Martinez got injured. That's an L, but Weigel is playing, so it's fine. He's on plus five form. Fabian still at the 84. Joe Gomez up to an 86. Konza 83. Justin only a plus one. Cash only a plus one. Martinez stays at the 86. But who is bagging them goals in? Is Leon Bailey single-handedly carrying us? No. It is, in fact, Nunez, 17 in one, 7.5 on average. If he keeps us up like that, next season, he can easily get past the 86 rating. That could be huge. At least 84 by the end of this year would be amazing. Leon Bailey doing incredible things, plus two this season, same as Nunez. Lang with the plus five. Buendia is already forgotten. And Fabian, I said he would get another chance. Seven and seven. Come on. I love that. And Weigel has replaced uh, Martinez there. He is uh, now on two goals and five assists thanks to the injury of Martinez. So Didi Haman's uh, future replacement or regen, I should say, is now in our team and doing a good job right there. I'm happy with the way it's going, but I can at the same time not believe how we are pulling these things off. And by the way, yes, we are actually in the Conference League, guys. We are part of it. And there might be a slight chance of us going ahead and getting things done here. We have won the group stages. And uh, we are going to be chasing down this trophy in this year. That seventh position did, in fact, put us into the Conference League. What a year that has been. Unbelievable. I can't, I can't 
can't believe we're first. How did we do that? That's, that's ridiculous. Nunez and Bailey carrying the squad as the defense is standing strong. And I think Emi Martinez plays a massive part in this rebuild right now. If we didn't have him, I'm pretty sure our team would be struggling a lot more. But it's great to see Noah Lang get up to that 85. Let's see how much more he can grow. There's still half, half a season to go. So let's see how that goes, guys. The end of the season is approaching. And as you can see, in the Conference League, we made it to the finals of it. We lost in the FA Cup final, I believe, against Chelsea there, which is a bit of an L. But we have won a bunch of league games. Now, I'm very skeptical when it comes down to if we have won the league title. So we're not going to see it here. We're going to jump straight into the game in the Conference League in the final to see how this one goes. Can this team get it done? A quick sim in it to see the result. And we won our first European trophy. Now, I know, I know this is not the biggest European trophy, but it's a new competition. And Aston Villa has won it in its first, no, not, not necessarily its first season, but in one of its early seasons. Let's just put it like that. Nunez scores in the 87th for us to go ahead and win it. And Noah Lang scores as well. Both of them getting us that first big trophy for the club. Love to see that. And the background here is kind of nice as well with the uh, Conference League um, design there. I think the Europa League was the one that I personally liked the most in terms of design. And we have won the league. We have won the... I don't get it. How is this possible? I'm telling you right now, next year, this team is not going to win the league. I don't know why, but something tells me they're not going to get it done. Aston Villa, only three losses the entire season. 10 draws, 25 wins. Goal difference looking incredible there. Apart from Liverpool, who look way better. 49 on goal difference, and they didn't get it done. That's surprising. Man City, Spurs, Arsenal, Man United, all outside of the top four. Aston Villa, Liverpool, Leicester, and Chelsea in it. And now let's see who has shot us to the freaking Premier League title, man. What the hell has gone on here then? Whoa! Okay, well, that is incredibly impressive. I don't think I ever had any player starts off with an 82 rating in the Premier League and score 42 goals. This guy is an absolute cheat code. The next Suarez is actually the next Suarez. 42 and 3 in 58 games. Wow. In the Prem. 30 goals in the Prem in 37 games. This guy's insane. Leon Bailey on the 17 and 12 right there. Fabian with the 14 and 14. He's going to keep on going up. We saved our very own Xabi Alonso and Noah Lang, the Dirk Kout. Uh, uh, replacement, so to say, a regen, I should say, 7.1 on average, 6.8 on just an amazing season. Matty Cash with the plus two as well. And even the youngster off the bench here, Ramsey, getting himself four goal contributions for our team, scoring three in the Conference League. Well done, lad. McGinn getting himself seven assists. Pretty nice to see. Weigel had plenty of appearances. And then Joe Gomez has two goals as well. Very, very nice growth. The highest rated player in our team is Leon Bailey. After him, Emiliano Martinez is now up to an 87 as well. Joe Gomez is up there with the plus three. Noah Lang with a plus seven this season. I don't know how the hell that worked out, but he's now one of the best players in the world in his position. And that confirms that the sale of Buendia was the right decision that we made. And uh, we will go ahead and see how high this Nunez can go after that ridiculous season he just had. I expect him to get up to at least an 88 next year. Our most valuable player is now at around 100 million. We are becoming a big club in England again. Aston Villa has won the Premier League. I can't believe that we have done this in just two seasons. It does not make any sense in my head. Anyways, we're going to go for the biggest trophy of them all. Champions League trophy is the one that we need. 10.7 million is the maximum we can get out of the next season. And now you got to give me money. You got to give me money. 142 million. Aston Villa is now free to spend their owners insane amounts of cash. And I got to say, guys, it's going to be a sad one. But the main man himself, McGinn, will sadly have to drop down to the bench. I'm not going to sell him, but I am going to drop him to the bench. Just a little heads up because we have so much money to spend and we can bring in an incredible, 
incredible midfielder into this team to upgrade this squad for sure. I'm going to look into development plans, as I said before, and see who is not necessarily going up and make decisions moving forward. Well, there's one player on my list that I think gets quite close to the likes of Stevie G and is also linked with uh, Liverpool in the future. But we're going to go and get him into our squad. Jude Bellingham is an amazing English midfielder that could possibly be the next Stevie G. Who knows? The man is great at defending. He's great at passing the ball. He has some good shooting on him along with great athleticism as well. Jude Bellingham would be the perfect replacement to bring in for John McGinn to be the second coming of Stevie G, in my opinion. So we're going to go after him and bring that Englishman back into the Premier League. That would be a great signing, in my opinion. So we're going to go ahead and offer Barcelona a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money. How much do they want? They want 83 million for this young man, which makes sense. He is absolutely quality. 72.4. Come on, Barca, 75 deal. Shake my hand. Thank you very much. The deal is through. Jude is coming to Villa. McGinn, I love you, pal. But as I said before, we got to put you onto the bench, my man. And you know what? El Ghazi might have to be sold. I'm going to go ahead and put El Ghazi onto the sale list, onto the transfer list. Traore and Coles can do it for us. And Jude will take over to play alongside Fabian. I think we have great balance here in this midfield. We have the likes of uh, uh, Martinez with incredible defending ability. We have Fabian, who is now a five-star, five-star player who has great passing and good dribbling on him. And then we have Jude as the box-to-box -box midfielder in our team. We could change these two around. And I think he will be, uh, you'll be feeling more comfortable down that right-hand side. Fabian can play those passes to the outside onto Bailey. And then Bellingham can play him to Noah Lang. And of course, Nunes is going to be waiting in the center to pick up the pieces. We have built something very, very special looking here. I'm going to look through the players one more time, see if there's anything I can go ahead and change. So far, I've not really seen anyone stagnating. So a lot of these guys are going to keep on going up this season, which possibly could be a second Premier League title back to back. Champions League title? I don't think it's enough yet. We're also going to be going for a backup goalkeeper since we have just lost our own. And as we know, Stevie loved Dudek, right? So let's go ahead and bring in a Polish backup. Bartolomej Dragowski is going to be the option and I'm going to go after 18.6 million. I think I'm just going to go ahead and pay that money and bring this man into our club. I think it's going to be a great addition as a backup goalkeeper behind Martinez. If he does get injured, we will have a good man waiting for his chance. With that now, we have an 80 rated backup goalkeeper, 81 diving, 83 reflexes, 79 positioning, and he's only 25 years old, so can easily go up to 81, 82. And uh, yeah, if Martinez goes down after the age of 30, we might go ahead and change it up, but I think he's going to go up to an 88 this season, and that's a really good sign. He's been having a great time over here in our squad. And maybe up next, I'm thinking about Konza. If he doesn't go up, we give him a chance this season. But um, Bailey now up to a 90. Incredible. January 2024, and I am very keen to see what's going on here. Now, our um, manager rating is not looking too good, but the team itself is looking absolutely amazing. Look at that. Bailey, 91. Nunez, as expected, plus three already halfway through the season. Lang up to a 90 rating with incredible stats on him. Fabian looking unbelievable in that 88. We believed him in him. We stuck with him and he has uh, paid it off at this point. Martinez, 86. Belling him up by plus two. Cash, 87. Gomez stuck at 87. Konza growing up to an 86. And Justin doing the same while Martinez is up to an 89. Two Martinez is in the team. I've just realized, by the way. Uh, one Argentinian, one for actually he's Argentinian as well, isn't he? Yeah, both of them are, are Argentinian. So um, yeah, they are doing a great job now in the league table. Where are we? Where the hell are we? Are we up there again fighting for the title or am I below it as I expected it? Yes, as I expected, bro. I told you it was a one off. I knew it. It was too unnatural. Something was perfect about our setup for us to get into that first position. Now we're down in fifth, and that's probably where we belong right now. But I'm going to be real. I am expecting a top two finish this season. If we can't get a top two with this team right here that we have at this point, it's a bit of a disgrace. But let's go into it. Stats. Here it goes. Nunez. 22 goals and four assists in 31. This guy keeps crushing it. He was the top scorer in the Premier League last season. I forgot to show you guys that stat, but 
Noah with a 9 and 6, Bailey with a 9 and 8, and Fabian is continuing his great performances with a 6 and 4. And Martinez is doing a good job at CDM. And McGinn is getting plenty of playtime as a substitute. So overall, I will have to admit, I'm very pleased with the way the team is going at the moment. My manager rating isn't the best, I'll be honest. It's not the greatest, but it is probably because they want us to sign a crucial first team player assigned to a midfielder or forward position, which I have not been willing to go ahead and do so because I'm really happy with the way the team is going. I don't necessarily want to change things too much. Leon Bailey is a new transfer for Aston Villa anyway, so... I wanted to keep him in the squad. Martinez is doing incredible in the midfield. I'm not really keen on signing anyone as a crucial first team player in the attack. I love the guys that we have. So I might just ride this out with a low manager rating, but get the success on the pitch. And that's what matters to me. Don't really care what the uh, board says as long as we don't get fired. A 16 million transfer offer coming in for El Ghazi though. I wouldn't mind bringing in a backup player that is uh, has more talent than El Ghazi for sure. So... I'm going to be looking into that in a second. We will have plenty of money to do so. I am interested in signing Chukweza as a backup now for our team. He should be worth a decent amount of money. So hopefully we can get him in to replace El Ghazi, who we just sold. I'm going to go in for an offer of 30 million. I will expect them to want more. I'd be surprised if they accept this, but wow. Okay, so they have accepted. Have I just overpaid? I think he should be worth at least 25. So... He is worth 33.5. This was another great deal. Wow. I am very happy with that one. Chukwu comes in with a nice rating and a boost to our bench. Here we go. That looks better. Coles comes in for Bailey. Chukwu comes in for Lang. Nino comes in for Nunes. Gin and Weigl can replace the boys in the midfield. And Haas can do his best for the centre-back spot. I think we're set up for success now. Guys, uh, we are approaching the end of the season and we have been smashing through everyone. And then we lose against Watford, of course, right as I say it. Well, we are now at, in back-to-back -back seasons. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, man. I wanted to I wanted to simulate that game manually. I ah, missed it. Oh, God. Oh, that sets some pain. But what the hell is Man City doing in the Europa League anyways? We lose in the Europa League final after winning in the Conference League. We couldn't do it. Champions League football didn't really work out for us. And let me show you why. Let's go into it here. We only got fourth in the league as well. Wow, this was not a good season. Champions League qualification, yes. But at least top four. All right, we're going to have to try and get into the Champions League group stages and get through it this time. Let me showcase you why this season hasn't really worked out for us. The way we wanted it to be now in the champions league itself in the group stages we only came third behind Gladbach, napoli and uh we got that third position with a minus one goal difference not good enough that dropped us into europa league my manager rating is at a 44 i am about to get fired at any moment i'm not happy with that at all but nonetheless the team has grown the players are looking good can i somehow sa save myself here before i get fired hold on a second youth development do I have anyone in the youth academy that I can quickly sign, please? Nope, I do not have a single person. I am going to get fired. This is going to be great. Anyways, let's jump into the player stats. Konza has gone down in rating because he got injured. Bailey with a plus three. Lang with a plus four. Martinez with a plus two at his age. Nunez with a plus four. 89 rated cash. Gomez, Fabian, all looking incredible. Justin looking very good. Six ratings above his potential. Martinez with a plus two. Hopefully can get that to that 88 next season. Bellingham doing a great job in midfield. And Konza sadly was injured. Hence why he dropped in his rating. But that's a bit of an L. But McGinn has done well as a backup. Weigl has done well as well. Chukvu gone up to an 81. And uh, 82, sorry. And Coles has done the same with a plus four in terms of growth. Still an exciting prospect. Amazing to see. And Nino has gone up by plus two. While Drogovsky, as expected, has gone up a little bit as well. And we had Ramsey out on loan. He hasn't really grown, which is a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. We couldn't get the goals done this season. I told you guys it didn't really look too good. And uh, yeah, fourth in the league, lost in the Europa League final. Next season has to be a massive one. I do expect Premier League title and possibly Champions League title because I'm going to be spending big on that centre-back spot to improve Konza to a different center back somehow your boy has kept his job and now the question is can he finally fix this issue that he's been encountering now the budget for this season is going to be set at 175 million 
that is going to be absolutely massive a lot of players going out on international football i get that well done to the lads we gotta we gotta get our rating up immediately so we have to sign one crucial first team player to uh, assign to a midfielder or forward position which is not necessarily ideal so that means i have to make a decision right now who am i going to be kicking out of this team i mean we have xabi alonso here we have uh mascherano here we have stevie g himself what what the hell do i do who the hell do i replace leon bailey do i get rid of him because it's technically a rebuild and i have to bring in new players i don't want to leon bailey is amazing man and nunez is incredible noah lang is incredible i don't want to replace any of these players i'm being forced to go ahead and do things that i don't want to do now when it comes to youth academy maybe that is where i can somehow save myself here so sign four players in youth academy okay that one we can do sign at least two players younger than 20 years with potential greater than the average overall rating of players currently in the same position maybe maybe i can somehow do that in the free agents maybe i'll try it's time to bring in sako yes we are bringing in someone that <laughs> said someone that has played with stevie g didn't really have a great time <laughs> gotta say mamadou sako was um i don't know uh, <laughs> an interesting player to say the least and we're gonna bring in kunde to basically be the guy here in that case uh, 88 rated, one of the top, top talents. The only, one of the only players that can still improve this team. So we're going to go ahead and offer them Konza in return, which will hopefully bring the price down a little bit. At least I'm hoping so. 44 million for him. I'll probably have to add in another 50, I don't know, 60 million on top of it. So, uh, let's see how this one goes. I would like to get Kunde into the team. So can you make it happen? 67 mil wow my my offer was actually nearly perfect let's go kunde for konza it had to happen konza got injured and he lost his potential guys he's not gonna grow anymore which is a big shame so kunde comes in at an 88 rating now to accompany gomez with the 88 as well 87 pace on him how good is he compared to joe so he is better in pace better in shooting better in dribbling better in physicality same rating in defending as joe gomez I would expect him to do better on the pitch uh, looking at those stats. So that has me excited. We improved our defense massively with that signing right there, guys. Well, since I do really want to keep my job, I am kind of forced to go ahead and make this deal right here, guys. I don't necessarily want to do it, but uh, they are kind of forcing my hand here. We're going to have to bring in Aurelien Chouameni into this club, a Frenchman to take over the position of the man that we brought in as a Mascherano type player. Chouameni will be taken over at CDM. Otherwise, I will be losing my job and I can't make that happen. So our hands are forced here. We're going to go in for him. We had to offer Martinez plus 60 million. It's a sad story here, but Rafa Benitez has forced me to go ahead and make that happen. I tried to go for straight up money, but that wouldn't work. So Chouameni is going to come in to play CDM. Alongside Chouameni, by the way, I have signed two players in free agents. Uh, I will show you in, in just a second. First of all, Chuk will get out of there and Chouameni will take over at CDM and Chuk, as always, will be on the bench here. Um, I have signed two players from free agents. As I said before, Pavlovic has come in and Acosta has come in. These players had to come in due to the objective that we had of signing two players that are younger than 20 years old with higher potential than the players in their position so these two lads are actually very talented and coming into the squad now to strengthen up the squad depth a little bit more than it already is uh and uh acosta can easily replace hauser on the bench very very soon which you know what we can do that right now he is a bit younger but he's gonna get past him very soon for chuamani himself of course we're gonna go in there and turn him into a cdm uh it's gonna actually you know what no, we're not going to turn him into CDM. Again, as I said before, Stevie G doesn't necessarily play uh, this interesting formation with a CDM. Uh, he's actually playing it in like a more flat type of style. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Fabian, Chouameni, Bellingham, and then Noah Lang, Bailey, Nunes, all in the perfect position. We're set up for success. I can see it coming. For some reason, despite achieving two objectives already, my manager rating has not gone up, so hopefully it will go up very soon. They want us to win the league title and the Champions League. Wow, the expectations are very high for this season. January 2025, Aston Villa dominating. Absolutely dominating everyone. Zero, bro. 
zero losses on our record 51 points a goal difference of 26 ruining every single team for that one last season that we had in which we had not done well we are stepping it up big time right now and i can tell you kunde has had a great impact on the team but martinez the 31 year old goalkeeper now up to a 90 rating 93 92 92 an incredible front three that we have built ourselves here with an original of aston villa in leon bailey doing an incredible job and of course matty cash as well another original three originals left in this squad and the rest has been replaced with amazing players coming in fabian chuameni and bellingham doing a great job there kunde and gomez have held it down for us to have zero losses and justin has stayed very very impressive cole's gone up to an 85 now looking better and better every week that passes every month it gets a little bit better and mcginn is still the beast that he used to be he's even higher rated than Weigel. so congratulations to him he's doing a great job there and Fernino is a good backup now in the champions league where are we sitting you might ask let's go in there let's check it out how have we done i have not paid attention so i'm going to be just as surprised round of 16 this season could be the one i genuinely believe it this season could be the one in which we win everything 2025 we could have this rebuild done already which would be a great thing to do now in terms of individual performances halfway through right now nunez of course dominating 20 goal contributions in 25 games 19 for bailey in 26 games 12 for noah lang who has been doing a great job there fabian just continuously contributing to the success of the team and matty cash is doing a great job as a fullback nothing to complain about chuameni doing a great job as a midfielder as well well done by him we have just beaten psg and we're going unbeaten in this month please 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 champions league against real madrid can you get through champions league final please yes i thought we didn't make it but we did make it aston villa is winning the fa cup getting fa cup has been won and the champions league final is activated my friends we are stepping into it that champions league final we will take a look into it in a second but before we jump in there and finish off the season after hopefully winning the champions league title we're gonna go into the premier league here and take a look at it villa only two l's taken 88 points much better than anyone else here 10 point gap to liverpool this is stevie g his aston villa he has built it very nicely of course we had some great players in there with the likes of bailey martinez and matty cash but we have even pushed those guys to new levels that they never knew they could get to leon bailey with a 94 martinez with a 90 matty cash with a 90 and then, of course, the new signings in Kunde and Gomez doing well here after Konzai's injury. We had to let him go. Justin from 81 potential up to an 88 right there. Fabian got up to an 89. Chuameni, one past his potential now. Bellingham has reached his full potential. I would, I'm pretty sure he would have gone even further. Most balanced stats ever there. Everything above 80. Nunez, I'm so excited to try him out. 97 pace, 89 shooting, 5 star, 5 star. This Champions League match is going to be a madness. Noah Lang doing a great job down that right wing as well. Can't wait to see how he plays. And in terms of the goals, 36 and 10. Nunez, you are incredible. Lang with the 19 and 6. Bailey with the 19 and 14. Fabian, 13 and 15 from center midfield. Unreal performance from him. Let's jump right into the Champions League final. AC Milan, I wonder what kind of team you have to be able to get into that final because I expected a much, much bigger team. Let's see who they beat along the way. AC Milan beat Man City, Athletic Bilbao. Wow, that's an easy one. And they have beaten, who else? AS Monaco. So they had a bunch of easier opponents, I will have to say. But the fact that they have beaten Man City kind of oh wow they got first in the group with psg okay this is no joke this team is gonna be sick so let's take a look at them at the ac milan team immediately who we got who we got in the squad i'm excited about this one let's jump right in there aston villa ready and prepared 
And then, of course, AC Milan with Vlahovic. Okay, I see you. Hakim Ziyech. Trippier at right midfield. Cool. If that's your thing, do you. Do you. De Paul is the captain. Van de Beek alongside him. Ribic on left midfield. Still in AC Milan. Hernandez as well. Hardy. I don't know who Hardy is. Mavropanos, I know. And Magnon in goal. Well... I guess you guys are good enough to make it this far. Let's see if you're good enough to beat us. That is such an amazing TFO. AC Milan, of course, has to rep the Maldini TFO right there, but I don't care. All right, I am here to make Aston Villa the best team in the world, and we have been able to get them very, very far. And now it's time to take them to the top level and make sure both sides of that trophy have the colors of Aston Villa on it on those ribbons i am ready leon bailey lead the line kalulu brings in a good cross we have to defend that and we do so very nicely now nunez looking for noah lang oh nunez gets pushed off the ball way too easily there but he has it under control noah lang were you offside i don't know but he takes the shot and nunez picks up the pieces eighth minute darvin nunez has done it the man has stepped up instantly in the Champions League final for Aston Villa. I thought that was offside, but Noah held his line really well. Terrible goalkeeping from Magnon. He has to hold on to that. You can't parry that in front of you as a goalkeeper. You got to go to the sides. It's one of the first things you learn as a goalkeeper. You can't parry the ball into the middle because there will be a world-class striker like Darwin Nunez just waiting for his opportunity. Uh oh Ace Milan are making moves forward, but Kunde, great tackle. Now we have Leon Bailey once again making a run. There goes the run of Nunez. He's going to be finding Leon Bailey. Leon cuts inside. He's still on it. He has Nunez outside the box. Okay, finesse shots, not that much of his thing. AC Milan, oh, they make interesting decisions here. They make very interesting decisions. I don't necessarily know what that was about, but... I don't care. I only care about my team's success. So here goes Lang. Cuts inside. Nunez again. Great football. Leon Bailey just waiting on the outside. Chouamani. Great football. Leon Bailey now open. He is left footed, isn't he? No, he's, he's right footed. It doesn't matter. We have five star weak foot on him. Why do I think about that too much? And wasted a big chance there. Darwin, are you good on heading the ball? Darwin Nunez. Ooh, he wanted to go for a bicycle kick. I don't mind. I would have taken that instantly. Fabian, you have a good left foot on you. Let's try it. I need to green time that. That needs to be better. Fabian into Bellingham. Bellingham, can you shoot from outside the box? Just like Stevie G. Just like Stevie G. He tries and gets pretty close. Magnon is struggling. The AC Milan defense doesn't know how to stop this incredible midfield and attack off Aston Villa so far. Physically, we are dominating them in the air as well. We have been getting all those from the goalkeeper. And that should be a red card right in the center there. I saw that. Nunez, great passing. Bailey, crossing to the center. Nunez, no. That has to go in. Another yellow for AC Milan. Two for them by now. Uh-oh. Bad defense for me. There we go. We get it back into Noah. Noah. Can you move it inside, please? Oh, wow. Referee, give him a red card, man. I'm sick and tired of AC Milan taking out my players constantly. That should have been a red card already. They should have at least one red card by now. Oh, this is very, very good play from AC Milan. Are they going to cross it in? No, they're not going to cross it in yet. Kalulu might get it in. No, they just don't cross it. I don't know why. Oh, this is why. Because they have amazing dribblers who could have gotten a penalty right there, but... We get away with it. Nunez over to Noah Lang. Noah Lang plays it. Now he's making his run. Lang going to play it back again. We have Jude making a great run. Nunez in the center just waiting for it. I can't play those passes for some reason. There we go. Bellingham. Nunez. Nunez fast our skills now. Wapa. Ah, no. That was not good enough. Sure many. Across, play it, play it across, lads. 66 minutes in, uh, a huge issue with um, my main man, Noah Lang here, seems to be that he has a lack of stamina. 79 stamina with high attacking work rate, he can't handle it. So it's going to be time to bring in our youngster. Uh, I'm going to go for Coles here on the right-hand side, going to give him a chance. As a youth academy player, he was in this team for this entire time, so I think it's only fair 
to give him his shot on that right hand side as a left footed right winger go on Coles go on Coles he's immediately having an impact on the game Coles oh man that is a very slow dribbling isn't it great passing come on Fabian how do you not score that take a hard look at yourself pal that was horrible good cross though Joe Gomez jumps terrible header Coles Coles making that diagonal run Nunez finds him Coles yes youth academy in the 74th minute let's go run over run over to the fans and celebrated Coles you earned it in this team since day one he was in the youth academy loaned out had his chances in the team as a backup and now he steps up for Noah Lang in the biggest moment of his life a Champions League final goal for a youth academy player I didn't think that was something we would do in this rebuild but hey Stevie G does actually care about the youth so well done right there bringing that man in great job Nunez Nunez expecting the diagonal run from Leon gets it oh Nunez will get that back look at that the guy has so much strength it's ridiculous bro he's so good I love him I absolutely love him he's such a quality player oh Nunez big steal 87th minute can he get past Mavropanos he does have the five star skills in order to go past people like that Nunez he's through Coles into him and he can't score that that's unfortunate he's my man of the match though no matter what anyone says Nunez is my man of the match incredible player I I will have to say the most impressive player in this team definitely him definitely him man he's strong he's fast he has good finishing on him he now has five star five star as well which makes him so so special so lads I can only tell you this much Nunez He's a beast and he has led us to raising that Champions League trophy with Aston Villa. Stevie G, the Stevie G rebuild for Aston Villa has worked out and we have done it. Yes, it is finished, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild because I had a great time recording it. If you guys want to see more rebuilds, please make sure to leave a comment down below giving me ideas for rebuilds in the future i personally had an amazing time recording this one as always aston villa here a great team we did a career mode with them back in previous fifa games and i had a great time doing that one at the time i think it was even last fifa if i'm not mistaken and uh they were a great club and now we have taken them to absolute glory one more time Leon Bailey steps up here along with our boys in the team. And I think Emmy Martinez, the one Aston Villa player that has stuck around throughout this entirety of this career mode, is going to lift it as the captain. Emmy, thank you so much for your help along this road. McGinn celebrating in the back. Things we love to see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Take care and peace.